Fantag, the same makers that do a lot of accessories for racing games, have controllers. Maybe it's new, honestly I had no idea that was a thing that they were doing, but it makes sense, right, being a game peripheral manufacturer. So today we're going to be talking about two of their brand new products, the EOS Pro Controller and the Nova Pro Controller. Let's dig through both of them and see if they're worth your time and your money. Hi, I'm Clef and you're watching Game Tech Talk. As a full disclaimer, both these products have been sent for review, all opinions are my own, and they get to see the video at the same time as everybody else. So we're just gonna unbox the two of them one by one, and then go through what makes them identical and what makes them different. I'm gonna start with the Nova Pro, which clearly is a more PlayStation-like controller. In the box, we have the controller itself. I went with this color, but they have a lot of different options. You have a trackpad here, select start, face buttons, D-pad, two analogs, symmetrical style, of course, shoulder buttons, triggers, two extra buttons, a 3.5 millimeter jack, you have rumble in there, you have gyro support. For all intents and purposes, this is a PS4 controller, comes with the two thumbsticks, USB-C to USB-A cable, reminds me of a, is it a pineapple tie? Uh, not. I used to do those when I was working in suit and tie. I used to work in suit and ties. <laughs> the very different time. It's the first time I see some of those included with the controller and I always wanted to pick them up so I'm excited to see that they're here. These are rings that you want to put under your thumbsticks so that they give you like more control. Wow, I see the idea. It definitely gives you more control. It prevents you from pushing too far on your sticks. Three different heights and each foam have a different density. This is the, the hardest, then you have the medium and then one that is very soft. So it's not going to hold your sticks as much. Honestly, the, I think that is a super, super cool touch. Here you have the manual, all the instructions, a warranty card, founder and CEO and, you know, just a message of appreciation i guess so that's the one that comes installed on the controller and that is the taller option that they provide as well okay so this is the nova pro let's push this one aside and now for the eos pro which also all the same they have a lot of different colors they're really going for something different in terms of aesthetic i think the word is uh psychedelic i like it phase buttons sticks your d-pad you have a turbo button, a mapping button, your home, select start, a 3.5 millimeter jack still, two mappable buttons, a switch to your modes, and then you also have the hair trigger, which I don't know if I mentioned, but you have them, but they're so subtle, like it's so easy to miss them. You also have a dongle with this one, two different options of D-pads, two more sticks, which just like the same, they're just the a little higher, exact same height as the other model. Appreciation card, the instruction manual, the warranty card, another USB-A to USB-C, same cable as the other model. And then they also include the same rings, exactly the same as what we got from the other controller. But let's talk about what makes them identical. They both use Hall Effect, they both use analog triggers that are also Hall effect in terms of the stick however they don't feel the same but the technology being used is Hall effect in both of them they both have membrane face buttons they both have membrane d-pads both have tactile shoulder buttons and they both have the same system for hair trigger which is that little notch right here that you can push off to the side it's definitely a hair trigger with a little more distance than some other options I've seen and then you can just bring back the notch to have your full actuation and when you do that it's analog so you know you have your graduality to your triggers and same system here you can push it off to the side you can bring it back and they also have the same types of back paddles and they feel exactly the same they also both have a 3.5 millimeter jack with headset support all right take two as it turns out when i filmed this video i gathered the data the day before for me to have everything i need to know to make an informed decision an opinion on these controllers what i completely got wrong that i figured out a few minutes ago when i was editing is i thought these were 70 us dollars but what i didn't realize yesterday when i was gathering the information 
was that I was on the Canadian currency and not the US currency. These are worth 48, 49 dollars US dollars, considerably less than what I thought. And that completely changes my opinions because I was not dragging them through the mud per se, but they were not getting my recommendation if, if I'm being completely honest. Some things have changed now that I have this new perspective. So I thought I, I just I have to reshoot. And here we are when it comes to the EOS Pro. Now, first of all, I really want to commend Fantec on the look in fact of both controllers. But if we start with this one, I love the way that it looks. You have this and it's hard to see right now. I'm going to put pictures on screen, but while it looks as if it's opaque, there's actually a little bit of a see through quality to this layer that they have on top. And you can see the inside from time to time when the light hits it right or when the RGBs are on. And of course, they have different color options. I also like the overall feel and the grip and the back. It's a controller that does feel different enough that it stands out versus the plethora of options that you have on the market right now. One thing in terms of just some of the decisions that are here that I'm not too keen on, the placement of the turbo and mapping button. I find myself when I was playing that I would often mistake those for select and start when in fact they are these two buttons. I was pleasantly surprised with the D-pad. Now all three options in terms of order, I would say that this one is at the top of the podium. This one comes third, surprisingly, and this one comes second, which is was a surprise to me because it does have sharp corners, but it doesn't scratch my thumb. So they have, I guess, just polish it enough that it doesn't bother you. It's definitely a membrane system. It has a center pivot, feels really good here. The 3.5 millimeter jack. I mean, I tested with the headset. It worked well. It does. It won't work on your every mode. For example, if you're connected wireless on your switch, it's not going to work, but in areas where having a 3.5 millimeter jack would make sense. For example, if you're wired on X input, it's going to work just fine. You have the switch mode, you have the X input mode and you have, you know, Android HID slash D input mode that is not spoofed. It's their own. So it's not going to work everywhere. And I also like the fact that you have a switch to change to different modes. Now, what are the things that I don't like as much? I appreciate the fact that there's a hair trigger, but I find that it does behave like a button, right? So there's no graduality once you put the switch on, but there's still a fair distance of travel in terms of the hair trigger. So to me, it kind of defeats the purpose. I'm kind of ambiguous with the back buttons. You do have to stick your fingers out for you to be able to click them effectively. It requires you to really dedicate your two fingers to these two buttons, and it makes it hard to use. I'll tell you straight up, in my opinion, this is by far the better option. Not only does it come with a swappable D-pad, it has a nice feel, nice grip, nice ergonomics, but you also have the dongle you have the different modes overall i believe this controller to be a better implementation on the market it also has a thousand hertz pulling rate when used wired and as we are about to transition to the other controller while they both have hall effect sticks i find that the hall effect on these ones work better and we'll get back to the nova pro but before closing on this one testing hall effect sticks in a world where I've tested TMR, it's creating that gap that wasn't there before where I'm, it's so obvious that there's better on the market because subjectively I would say I don't like those sticks. Um, but the reality is those sticks are not worse than the Hall effects ones that I tested three, four, five months ago. It's just that the market has evolved to a point that it's making it very hard for me to go back. Not every TMR is as good as the ones that I've tested recently. And I, I know this uh, firsthand right now, and you'll get to understand that in a future video with only one exception that I've talked about extensively on this channel. Hall effect, generally speaking, are well under ALPS in terms of performance while they have their own benefits, no drift, yada, yada. But yeah, what we have here in terms of sticks, it's not that it's bad. It's that I've experienced so much better. This is a sub $50 controller. Considering the fact, I think it is a pretty compelling solution for that price. Put it this way. This is what the easy SMX X20 should have been. This is a much better X20 controller. And on that same breath, I could also tell you that, well, for $20 more based off of regular price, you can get something like the Tarantula Pro. And when talking about the Nova Pro, the feel, the ergonomics, wow, feels really, really good. It's kind of somewhere in between an Xbox controller and a DualSense controller because, you know, it has that Xbox shape, but you have these symmetrical sticks. 
the ergonomics feel really good. I really like the aesthetic. I like them both, but this one, like it's really shiny. It looks like an arcade machine. I mean, it's just jumping at you. It's very pretty in that sense. If you like that over the top aesthetic, it's got that going. I also can give it the benefit of having what seems to be one of the better quality clear plastic controllers that I have because I, I've already tested this extensively and usually after this amount of exposure to me gaming with them they're always scratched and scuffed this one so far I can't see a single scratch on it oftentimes clear plastic is more prone to scratches it's also more prone to it's more brittle it's more easy to break etc etc doesn't seem to be the case here at all whatever they have going seems to be very good quality now some of the issues they're both Hall Effect sticks, but these ones, they, they're worse. Just in terms of using them in Aim Labs, I was not getting as good results. When it comes to the D-pad, I also was not getting anywhere near as good results with Street Fighter. It wasn't bad. The one thing that makes me scratch my head is the fact that it's a glossy D-pad. It's like your thumb sticks to it. So for input commands, it's kind of off-putting and it's also more steep in terms of the corners. To me, that's it's a must-have glove kind of controller you have the trackpad you do have the rgb stripe you have your 3.5 millimeter jack technically it doesn't have the extension port that the dual shock 4 did have i would not recommend this controller not at the price point with the 30 percent discount yes it makes sense but it doesn't make sense when you have this one at the same price that's kind of what i'm getting at there's no way that these two controllers should be priced the same in terms of tech this one has the trackpad it has a speaker it has the mute button i mean it has more things but it's also things that are part of the playstation dna and this is the only place where i would recommend to buy this controller is if you really want something that feels better for a ps4 experience specifically i also know that right now on the ps4 market you can get like cheap lookalikes for like 20 usd and they feel exactly like the original so for me it's it's hard to justify this controller now this one i can definitely understand why some people would want to pick it up by the way this one doesn't go up to a thousand hertz pulling rate it goes up to about 250 however funny enough the bluetooth performance in terms of pulling rate and in terms of latency which i definitely have felt is better here than here in a nutshell, would I recommend the EOS Pro? Yes. However, I do think as rapidly as this market has been changing, the relevancy of this controller might be affected very rapidly. So if that's something, if, if you're the kind of person that you like to watch these videos, thank you very much. And you're going to wait in months, two months, three months, four months to see if, oh, is that still the one that I want? I wouldn't be surprised if by then this option is less appealing. If you're looking to, for something to buy now and you like the way that it's positioned right now, as long as you're not going specifically for aiming games, I think this is a fine controller that gives you a lot of the new redefined basics of what you should expect from a more premium option, but it's not priced at a premium price. That's the one of the greater benefits of this one. Whereas this, I don't recommend it personally. And again, unless you have a very specific use, which is you want something for your PS4 that feels more premium than the other options you've been used to, then okay, maybe you could consider it, but I would still suggest that you shop around and see what other options exist because you do have quite a few that are very appealing as well. It's also a smaller market, so there's not gonna be a whole lot of shopping happening, happening there. And I don't know how much better options we're gonna see down the road because it's, it's trying to cater to a market that has kind of moved on with the PS5 in the dual sense, like Sony brought that controller in such a different direction. Yeah, I don't know what the future is like for this type of controller. And there you have it, guys. This is pretty much the summary of my review. Let me know if you have any inputs, any feedback, although they've been around for quite some time in other gaming peripherals. I don't know them to be a company that has done a whole lot of game controllers. I could be wrong. But I'm excited to see what's next for them. I think this is an interesting approach. I think they have a lot of uh, good things to their blueprint. I'm more excited to see where they're going to take the future revisions uh, down the road. So thank you very much for watching. Please consider doing all the YouTube things and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.